welcome to Irish Web TV News and Views. We'd like to thank uh, Positive Age for the use of their studio and to Cyro for the broadband. Well, folks, breaking news this evening, and that is on a national level and on a local level, all St. Patrick's Day uh, parades have been cancelled. So that's not good news. And that is, of course, all because of the coronavirus. In the studio this evening, I have a very interesting guest, and that's Pauline Tully, TD, newly elected TD, Pauline Tully. Pauline had a great success in the elections gone by, and uh, she was the first elected ahead of two sitting, two sitting TDs in the election. Pauline Tully, TD, welcome. Thank you very much, Anya. Um, Pauline, your background, you are a teacher. I'm a teacher, yes. I taught in Breffney College up to about a month ago. I suppose. Um, I was teaching there since um, the middle of the 1990s, so I'm a second level school teacher. But um, yeah, and I, I'm telling you, I, I, I miss now the, the students and the staff. And of course, um, the tenure of, of your TD will be approximately five years all going when in, yes. in politics. So you take a career break. I take a career break, yes, for the moment, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and as well, you're a community activist. You have been always active in the community. Yeah, I was. Uh, I started off, I suppose, my community activism as a Broga leader way back in the beginning in Kinnelec. Um, that was around 1991, I'd say. I was also a member of Kinnelec and District Community Co-op um, for many, many years. And we actually built a, a fine resource centre in Kinnelec. The Rail Talk. Centre, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and I was also involved with Irish Rural Link uh, when it was um, based in the Rail Talk Centre as well. And many other community act, uh, um, um, community uh, projects in, in, oh, in it's been involved. Yes, I've always been involved. I'm going to ask you a silly question. I've never asked anyone before. What does a TD do exactly? What is your day? What 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 do you do as a TD? Okay, when when the doll gets up and going, when the government is formed, uh, it meets every from Tuesday afternoon two o'clock until um, Thursday evening. Um, so I would be required to be in the Dáil from 2 o'clock. It sits from about 2 until about 10, 10.30 at night on a Tuesday. On a Wednesday all day from half 10 in the morning till approximately half 10 at night. And then on a Thursday, at least until lunchtime when the voting takes place, I think a lot of rural TDs kind of leave at that stage um, to get back down the country. And I probably will as well because I want to get back down to my, mm. my two sons. Um, but some will sit on longer in the Dáil and discuss uh, different forms of and legislation. And so for folk out there, you, you you have you bring your you bring your issues to the fore in the doll. Somebody gets up and does a speech on something, and yes. they bring points to, to of notice that they want something discussed. Isn't that the yes, way it goes? Yes, they do. Yeah, and there's very particular rules around speaking time, which is based on the size mm. of a political party or a political grouping. So many of the independents group together because they want to form a group so that they will get speaking time. Um, so this time round, it says Sinn Féin, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael will all have similar size groupings, they will all have similar size speaking time. Um, the whip of the group then, which is Ingus O'Snod, ETD from mm -hmm. Dublin, and he will allocate um, speaking time to different uh, TDs who want to speak on particular issues. So you need to have your work done before you go to the Dáil, you need to know what issues you're bringing up. Yes. And if you've got speaker's time. Yes, you do. Yes. Mm. And it's something I'm not even sure of yet, how it will yeah. work. Um, for the, since I've been elected, I've been in the Dáil a number of times. It's only sat twice since that, but I have been in it to sign the role and for induction that they provide on the workings of the mm. Dáil. So I'm getting to know how it all works, but you really don't know until you actually sit through it and, and experience mm. it firsthand. That's a lot of a lot of talking and a lot of listening, isn't it? Until half ten at night. Time. It is. And I then to drive down to the country, back to the country. I would probably stay on a Tuesday and Wednesday mm. night. Take because, some of the pressure off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would find it, it like it's it's best part of two hours to get there. You know, depending on traffic. Um, so I would find that quite tiring to do that three mornings yeah. a week and, and three evenings and a week. And half ten at night to look to an hour yes. and a half journey would be difficult. And plus, my children would be in bed at that stage mm -hmm. anyway. So I, um, what I will do is make sure that I spend mm. good quality time with them at the weekends. As a mother, um, it's going to be five hard years on you. You know, it's going to be. Um, full on and um, do you think it'll be difficult? Um, I, look, I was a councillor for almost 13 years in Cavan County Council so I'm familiar with politics at a local level and familiar with the constituency work which TDs are expected to do as well and I'm doing at the moment and um, so I, I think I'll be able to cooperate in it. I, I enjoy it, I have an interest in it so that will make it easier to do. Um, it's just to make sure that I make time for family, my two sons in particular, and for other members of the family as well. 
I think everybody, no matter what job you do, needs to have a healthy um, work-life balance and it's just getting that right. And I've been advised by everybody from Mary Lou and Gerry Adams to other party activists to make sure and get that right from the start and, and stick to it. Sundays, I've been told, should be sacrament. That's a family day and that's what I intend to do is that's, keep Sundays That's, that's certainly sound advice. Certainly yes. sound advice. But to get back to the phenomenal um, success Sinn Féin had in, in the election, um, it came about. Now, I know Sinn Féin uh, were, didn't do so well in the, the local elections mm -hmm. before that and um, was a bit disappointed and I kind of the, the bubble deflated or the bubble burst a bit there. But this time around, uh, um, all anybody was saying, and all I'd say, all you were hearing is the people wanted a change. They wanted change, yeah. Like the local and European elections were only last May, and we had a very disappointing election, uh, especially here in Canada. Yeah, we lo you lost some lost um, three, key people. Three yeah. councillors out of four. So we were conscious of that. Now, Matt McCarthy and myself have both been selected prior to that to stand in this constituency. And we decided we would still stand two candidates in this constituency mm. because we felt the vote was there. Why did he come back? Well, I suppose I should ask him, not you, but he did come back from European to, to, to national. Yes. It was well, a big change, you know. It is, but Matt's, I, I think, a very, very able politician and I think he'll have a lot to offer here at, at national level. Plus, he's a, he's a young man with a wife and five children and he wants to be in a position where he can see them more often too and mm. that's understandable. Again, the work balance thing coming yes, out there as well. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So to get back to the change, um, uh, and I was at some of the rallies from different parties, just, just to go and get the feel and to look at things. And people want change more than anything. We want, uh, they want change in, oh, you know, we talk about stuff going on in the Garda Shikana. We talk about um, the farmers, the difficulties mm. the farmers are having at the moment. I was at that farmers meeting that you had, the... the um, public meeting in Kilnanlec yes. and we talk about the beef industry mm -hmm. and the cartel that is there and um, they just people want more transparency they want to be able to 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 nearly make to, to help make their own decisions instead of being like more or less bullied into doing things mm -hmm. yeah and coming from a rural area I'm very conscious of the, the, the plight of the farmers at the moment. Both the beef farmers and indeed the dairy farmers are feel that the prices they're receiving for their produce is very low and yet it's of a very high quality. So I think it needs to be addressed and I don't think the will was there prior to this to address it. And uh, The farmers themselves... Just the will or...? or I don't know we're, we're, what we're it was. We're hearing about yeah. cartels and we're hearing about big bosses at the back mm, of these things mm. that nobody will stand up against. Yeah, I let's, think let's the call farmers, a spade a spade, yeah, you know? The farmers are putting their trust in Sinn Féin to stand they up. They are. Yeah. And I know we will not be afraid to stand up and mm. say what, what, what and the And that is. just does, doesn't follow through. If you've been to any of the rallies, I've been to some of the rallies, um, that followed through, is in every, through on everything. Mm -hmm. We've been where people have, have uh, difficulties with a lot of government agencies like Tusla, the Garda Shikana, um, to name a few, um, they want more transparency. Yeah. They want to be able to see that there's a way out of problems. That you're not shut a door. An organisation can't shut its door on you. That there has to be people responsible and transparency there. Yeah. There's a lot more accountability. So if you promise to yeah. clean, uh, Mary Lou has done that and has given that promise, and her words kind of say that. Um, yes, we will go in and investigate these mm -hmm. things. We will. We will do something about that. Mm -hmm. That's what the people want to hear, and it's what they want yeah, done as well. The people do want to hear that. Um, I think they're fearful that, I don't know that there's an unwillingness by other uh, politicians and other political parties to well, actually... Well, you do know the old to, boys to, brigade yeah. and the crony, cronies and yes. all this sort of crony politics. Yes. Um, FG and FF sticking together and you, there's not much difference between them. This is what you hear people saying. Yeah. They feel one's as good or as bad as the other, whichever and I way think you look at it. Fianna Fáil are very much seen as being linked to corruption because of the previous government prior to, you say, what we call the Celtic Tiger and then prior to the recession and the Galway tent. And that, that whole image hasn't changed. And mm -hmm. they feel that there's a, yeah, a boys club there and you scratch my back, I scratch yours mm -hmm. with the it, business interests and you know the heads of different organisations mm -hmm. and they don't see Sinn Féin as having those connections because we don't and we're willing to actually you yeah. know so highlight so the problems. What we can see is Sinn Féin's coming in very brave putting mm -hmm. their hand up and saying yes we're going to start this. Mm -hmm. Can you? We definitely try.
it won't be from, from lack of trying. And I think people are wise enough to know that you can't solve everything overnight and it will take years. But if they see that you are making a genuine effort to do what you promised to do. Mm, it'll take more than five years. It so. will in some cases, yes. Yeah. Uh, just another thing yeah. has come to mind there. Pierce Doherty has done a big um, sort of overhaul on the insurance. Yes. On uh, the insurance um, cases, and not mm -hmm. insurance, but the insurance companies and their yes. makeup and everything in Ireland. That's another area where um, yeah. it's not transparent. If, if it's you, the crazy. insurance company tried to tell you that they hike premiums because of fraud. And there's actually a very small percentage of fraudulent cases. And yes, there are some, and they need to be reported to the Guardian and investigated. But they account for a very, very small percentage. So it doesn't hold out that mm. you know what they're saying that they have to rise pre premiums by so much mm. so i think it's a whole profit-based industry and again it's almost like a cartel they almost like they they operate together and there's no mm. competition no real competition between the different insurance mm. companies and that's something that needs to tend yeah it needs to be so open the lid people. on that as well absolutely yes to get into politics again pauline um not many ladies make the grade. Uh, mm. As you say, you said earlier there that oh, uh, women are great in the community because they're the primary, mostly the primary carers in the family. They're, mm -hmm. they're the mum with the family and they stay at home with the kids. They don't, they don't go too far from home. But um, now you're going to have to travel and go to Dublin and, 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 and things like that. And you're going to have a broader role now in mm -hmm. a thing and um, we talk about gender working in politics and do you feel I'm going to ask you the silly question do you think a woman has to work harder in politics uh, yeah I, I absolutely do. do yes yeah and it's not women are just as capable if not more capable than men in politics I don't mean that in any disrespectful way like women make up 50% of the population so they should make up 50% of the representation at national level and indeed a council level as mm. well but they don't but it's been shown that in countries where there's a bigger percentage of women that there's more focus on social issues and um, so that's what we need to see I think women have just have a different outlook and a different way of doing things mm. than men do so you need a combination of both and um, there's only I think 22% of the doll makeup is women mm. and I think there's only one more woman this time um, than there were the last time right, which so is unfortunate much, yeah. yeah like mm. I, I do agree with gender quotas um, and some say oh they're, they're you know um, you want the best person for the job really not just because of their gender you do but you unless you put something in place to focus the main political parties and the leadership of those parties mm. on getting more women in, in, in mm. it won't happen um, now if I, and Sinn Féin have always had this policy if there were two people um, wanting to go for a position for as a candidate one male and one female of equal merit then the female will be given priority and that was always the way we had it mm. Okay, and we still operate that way. You know, I don't think a woman should be put forward for a position uh, as a candidate um, if she's not the most capable no. person. You know, I think, I think we all know, agree with that. Yeah. Very topical at the moment, uh, Pauline, is the COVID nineteen virus. Um, it's it's frightening. It's mm -hmm. frightening to people who've got underlying conditions and people, you know, people who've got respiratory conditions. It's frightening. Um, the media is hyping it up. Yes. I mean, the last headlines in one of the papers is 1.9 million of us are going to get it in Ireland. I mean, that's scaring the living daylights yes. out of people. Mm. Is there any need for that? Uh, are, are the, the government is just playing it by ear as it goes along. Um, there's been rumours and a talk and a murmuring in the media of maybe a national government or a, unity, a unified government to deal with this rather than, you know, mm. A caretaker government like it is very important it's a serious thing yeah see the 1.9 million figure wasn't given a time uh, line on it like is that in the next few months is that in the next two years you know like so mm. it's like a figure like that causes panic and there's of no, course it, it shouldn't does, be yeah. panic that's At one fourth of the, of the population yeah. one in four of us are going to get COVID. now yeah. the, the, the uh, reckon between 80 and 90 percent yeah. of the people who do contract the disease will have very minor um yeah um symptoms, know, yeah. symptoms. but it is the other 10 to 15 to 20 percent, I'm not sure yet, who, who I am fearful for. Okay. So do you people, think there's any way the government could pull together and maybe get to grips with it a bit better? I think uh, they do need to work. Uh, like there's a caretaker government in place and Simon Harris, okay, he, he's doing what he can. But I do think there is a role for all political parties to, 
to, to work together. Um, now there was a proposal. It's a national crisis now at this stage. There was a proposal last week about putting together an, an additional committee made up of members of each party and that was uh, rejected because they don't feel there should be another committee, another layer put in there that the health experts have to answer mm. to. Um, we've got the best health uh, expertise coming together. They don't all agree with each other, but they need to tease it out. I suppose it's evolving as well because mm -hmm. we don't know enough about this virus, mm -hmm. not just in Ireland, but in the world. Nation, so, nation, yeah, we, yeah. So, you know, and there's, there, there's some say that um, the virus will only live on the surface for a number of hours. Now it's, say, some say it's a number of yeah, days. Yeah, that's so, the kind of contradiction know, stuff yes. we're getting. And we, and we, we just, just made that, folks. If anybody out there, um, don't depend on social media for your information. Mm -hmm. Go log on to the, the HSE information, yes. informa uh, their HSE's um, online information service. That's where you get your information. If you feel anything, you don't go into a hospital demanding uh, a coronavirus test. Uh, don't do that. You, you ring your doctor, you speak to your doctor, and they'll all talk you through it. That's the way it's been dealt with, and mm -hmm. um, that's the way to go. Uh, Pauline, I asked you what the duties are. What does a TD do? Now, you're going to hold office for five years, which seems like a long time now, but it flies. Uh, what are you going to bring uh, as a TD to the table? Yeah, well, there's a couple of, I suppose, things that I'm, I, I'm, I've already mentioned rural Ireland and I come from a rural area, so I would like to see you know, better treatment of our farmers on the ground because I feel if the farmers are being treated fairly and getting a fair price for the produce, they're the people who will spend the money in the, in the community and will keep rural communities vibrant. Mm. Every town and village I canvassed in Cavan in the run up to the election has vacant buildings. You know, the, the, the villages, the main streets are. Shops you know, are closing. Shops are closing. Dilapidated, yeah. yeah. And mm. it's not worth people's um, you know, money. It, it costs too much to actually do these up and, and rent them out again. So I think a scheme has to come up, has to be, has to be brought forward that encourages um, whoever owns these properties to do them so up and So you'd like to see more rural or urban development? I would, yeah. yeah. Education is obviously very important to me as a teacher as well. And I want to see pay equalisation for all teachers mm. and indeed across the public sector as well. Um, and housing is a huge issue. Most of the representations I receive in relation, are in relation to housing. Mm. And, it, you know, actually there are enough vacant houses in this country to house everybody that's on the housing waiting list or are homeless. Mm. And yet, I don't know why it's houses are being, sleeping well for yeah, being in, boarded in up. And, yeah. You know, like the council here themselves have uh, lots of houses and they're boarded up. And it's just really, really annoying to people mm. who are waiting and looking at that. And then they're on so the housing So that's housing list. you're going to deal yes. with? Yeah, that, I think that's very, very important. So uh, you're going to you're going to pick those those items and you're going to work on them. I'm going to work on those. Yes, mm. they're important to me. Yes. One last thing to ask you, Pauline, is um, about modern day politics. Um, people don't, you know, people, you know, um, they're not following the allegiance, the allegiance of party politics mm -hmm. anymore. People are going to go for people who are going to do something. They want to see results. Um, and it won't. It'll take more than five years for mm -hmm. for f to break some of these systems that are not working in the yes. country, like the homeless one, like the housing situation, yes. and all that. Um, do you really realistically think that Sinn Fein, if, if there's a government set up with Sinn Fein as part of it, can really come in and do something really? really whip up a whistle that the people want yes, and I give it to them in five yes, years. Yeah. The will is there and we have our, our policies. They're well thought out and well and, and um, we've had them checked by the Department of Finance. You know, so that we know that they're sound. They do of course, other work. political parties would rip you apart on I that. Know. You see, they're, like other political parties are saying, oh, you know... You're um, not feasible. You're, yeah, you're, that we tax. Your economics is not feasible. Yeah. It doesn't add up. Well, they're, they're saying that we can't tax the um, foreign direct investment coming into the country. The corporation tax rate is only 12.5%, which annoys other countries in Europe because mm. they want to see it higher. But we would like to see the companies that come in here actually pay that rate. We're not talking about raising it, we just pay it because most of them through loopholes are getting away with paying 1 or 2% tax. The, the richest people in this country, I think a few hundred of the richest people, pay less tax 
than somebody on the average industrial wage. That, that's not fair. We want mm. to see a fairness come into the, the system mm. here. If there's a business person who's taken risks and built up their business and pay their fair share of tax, we say, well done, and they should be done, you know, supported mm. in every way that they can. I think that's what the people on the ground want to see yeah. changed. People who, the ordinary everyday workers, yes. most of us out there, want to see something, you know, see a bit more equality, yeah. a bit more equal in, yes. in, the, in the work that we put in. Um, Pauline Tully, you had a really great, successful election mm -hmm. and um, you're going to fight for the people of Cavan, you're going yes. to fight for the farmers and, um, and for education because you're a teacher. Yes. And um, one last thing, um, if you want to be, as a, politi as a politician and as a TD going out, what would you like best to be remembered for? Okay, another thing that I'm very, very, um, uh, or very, um, strong on and want to see change in, is how women are treated. Um, I just feel there's... In what areas now? In relation to domestic violence mm -hmm. and um, coercive uh, behaviour by some in a relationship. And I think a lot more education is, is needed on that. Um, that people recognise what that kind of behaviour is, that controlling behaviour. And... Um, and more done to it, done about it. Like more women have been killed by a partner or former partner. Crimes of passion, yeah. yeah than mm -hmm. those, their own partner. Than those yeah. have been in, in gangland mm -hmm. uh, violence yeah. in the last two where years. Where would you, just briefly on that point, and I'm aware of the time we spent talking, um, briefly where would you see, where would you see starting with that? Education, you know. Education's very important, yeah. right. To know um, where to go for help. Yes. And to know that you can recognise that this, mm. because recognise the red flags. Yes, a lot of, of women in um, in a relationship like that don't actually realise what's happening until it's almost too late. Mm. They're not aware because maybe they've never experienced this kind of coercive mm. behaviour. Bullying, this physical, mental. Yeah, because it, often and a, and a relationship mightn't even there might be any physical violence in it. Can just be a controlling relationship which is not healthy so it's even to recognize those but a lot more help needs to be made available as well more refuges for women and children who need to, yeah. to escape and more uh, a lot of work needs to be done on the sense sentencing in courts mm. i just don't that's feel a big update on everything oh, there yeah. so education mm. um uh, help yes and of course then the dealing with the perpetrators of yes. this this kind of Absolutely, violence yes. well I haven't heard that mentioned in the um, in the election talk, but that's a very good point, Polly, and I'm glad you, you yeah, I'm glad yeah. you're going to look into that. It, it's uh, touch a lot of women's hearts. We just like to say as well that men can find themselves. Absolutely. Some yeah. men can find themselves in the same circumstances, and uh, can would need to get help as well. Well, well done, Pauline. And uh, just one last question: uh, You've been you've been to the, you've had your initiation in yes. the doll. What yeah. did you find? Was it Eliza? Was it Draw dropping good, jaw um, dropping good. <laughs> Did it make you like, oh, I'm here? <laughs> it, it was. It was a great day and a great feeling. Mm. Um, my very proud moment, I would was say. Very proud. Um, my two children with me and a sister and brother with me. Mm. And I suppose I, I, I thought frequently of my parents as well because mm. um, they were very proud, into their yeah. politics. Yes, and I suppose that's where I grew up in, in a very political family so they would have been extremely proud as well but my whole family were proud it was a proud day for me my family and indeed for for the, the area for Cavan mm, as Cabin well um, mm. and and i'm i feel humble as well that i've been given this Elected opportunity to support to just actually to yeah to represent these people okay. I'm, I'm very honored to mm. do that and i will absolutely do my utmost to make that uh, well, well done, Pauline. Job, well, well done, Pauline yeah. Tully. Um, once again, we'd like to say well done to Pauline Tully. Pauline Tully, TD. Thank you for watching. You have been watching Irish Web TV's News and Views. And thank you for watch logging on and watching us.